Hi everyone! In this tutorial we will learn how to introduce embedded content in our virtual tour using 3D Vista Virtual Tour Pro software. So we will take any kind of content from an external website and insert it in our tour in a panel or viewer so that we have it integrated in our tour. This embedded content can be a YouTube video, a Google map, a 3D object or just any kind of content that offers the possibility to be embedded in other websites and therefore also in our 3D Vista virtual tours. Let's begin. In this first example we want to be able to click on this figure here and open a 3D model which we will integrate from another website. The effect will be almost as zooming in the object and being able to observe it in more detail and from all angles. As always, we will begin by outlining or defining the active zone of the hotspot, so the area within the panorama which, when being clicked on, will open the 3D figure. Inside the program, and more precisely in the panorama tab, we click on the subtab Hotspot. We zoom in a little bit and select the polygon hotspot on the top right. And then we start outlining the object by clicking on Drawing, which will create a polygon with many corners and curves. On the right we can now change the filling color and line color to make it stand out more. Let's make the outline a little thicker too and make the filling color more transparent. Let's check how it would look in the actual tour. So with this now we have the hotspot show at all times and the mouse cursor changes to the hand to indicate that you can click on it. We can also go back and click here to make the hotspot appear only when rolling over with the mouse. That's depending on everyone's preferences. Now we move on to the actual content. Therefore we go to the skin tab to create our panel which will have the content inside. We create a first container which will serve as a veil to kind of block the virtual tour content behind the 3D object when we open it. Draw it as big as the view of our virtual tour, so 100% and 100%. And let's make it a little darker. Inside of this container we will now insert another second container. This is the one that will actually contain the 3D object. Here I'm determining its exact position, which this is obviously something you can define according to your preferences, as big or as little as you want. And I want this container to be completely white. And the key here is now we want to insert a web frame into the second container. This web frame is what allows us to insert web content into our virtual tours. Again, we set this to be as big as the second white container. Here on the right, as you can see, this would be where we'd insert the URL, which the website from which we want to take the embeddable 3D object should provide us. For example, the object we will be using in this one On this website you can actually find a lot of very cool and useful 3D objects ready to be embedded. As you can see down here we have the embed option. This is a common tool also in websites such as YouTube or Vimeo or Google Maps etc. A lot of websites offer this option in which you see a code or URL which you then have to insert into the program as I will show you now. In this case Sketchfab gives me quite a complex and long code but that's okay. We copy it and paste it here in the program on the right hand side. However, there's quite a bit of code that we don't need, so we'll delete everything that we don't need so as to only stay with the URL, starting with the HTTP.
Now you can see that the web frame reacts and pulls the model from the website. At the end we can also delete all of this. Now that's all you need for the content. Now let's also add a close button so that the user is able to close the 3D model. So we add a button, I select a new one because I have my own button design which I will import. Click to set it here on the, right, on the top right or change the parameters to pull it to the top right corner. Click add action to make it close the entire panel which we just created. Therefore you select show hide component from the list and select hide so it hides the component when being clicked. In this list we select the first container, the black one. Closing this one is actually enough as it is the primary container which contains the white container and the web frame which therefore will be automatically closed too. Now we only have to make the main container invisible at start, otherwise it would show always on top of the virtual tour rather than only when being clicked or only when being called from the hotspot. So we untick the eye for this container and go back to the panoramas and hotspot tab. Select the hotspot we just created and click add action. Now we want the action to be make the container with the web frame visible, so we select the action to show height component and we leave it at show. Make sure here that you select the primary, the black container. Click done and let's see how it turns out. Go to preview. That's our hotspot. And yes, there's the element and our three-dimensional object in its player. Absolutely functional from within our virtual tour. And down here the player maintains all of the options that the source website, so Sketchfab in our case, offers us with the embed code. And that's it for the first example. Now on to the second. We'll basically do the same thing here, but instead of a 3D object, we now want to embed a YouTube video. This will be almost exactly the same process for videos from other platforms such as Vimeo, for example. This time we don't use a hotspot to trigger the embedded content, but want to trigger it from a button, which will always be visible in our tour, no matter where we currently are. So we are back in the skin tab and click on button. I click on new because again I have my own button design which I want to import. Click on the canvas to place the button and again on the right I'll set the exact position. And here in edit styles I can further determine states of the button. So I want the button design to change when the user rolls over it with his mouse. Now as before we will set the action so as to show the panel when being clicked. So we select show height component. And then again select the main container, the black one, from the list of skin elements. Now we move on to the content which we need embedded. So we go to the list of skin elements and mark visible the second white container that we created before so that we are able to see it here. We go to the web frame part where we can still see the embedded link of the 3D object from before. Now this is what we want to replace with the YouTube video now. So we go to YouTube and to the video we want to embed. I prepared this already so this is the video that I want to include. Here we go to share. Here's probably what you are used to, so the normal link to share the video on social media or by sending this link to someone that you want to see the video. This is not what we want, we will have to go to embed instead, just as in the case before. Copy the entire link, go back to the program, 
and paste it here to replace the 3D model embedding link from the scenario before. Just as before, we will keep the necessary part of this link, so starting with the HTTP and until the end of the link, so all of this we delete. Okay, so the closing X, which we created before, still carries the action to close the whole panel, so there's nothing that we have to adapt for now, but we will make the panel invisible at start again, and let's see how it looks. Okay, so here's our button with its color, and when we click on it, we see the video in the YouTube player popping up which is very useful because this way you don't have to upload the video file into your virtual tour yourself and waste hosting space by that or inflate the virtual tour file size. Instead you source the video from YouTube, so the video is stored on YouTube's servers which as you know is for free. So if you want to include a video into your tour it's always a good idea to upload that video to YouTube before and then embed it into your tour so that you don't have to carry the video's weight inside the tour. And again, down here you have the typical YouTube player options. And last but not least, let's have a look at scenario 3, where we'll embed a Google map into our virtual tour. Let's change it up a little bit. So now we'll simulate that we have a little button panel down here on top of our virtual tour with several buttons. I'll only insert one button to make it quicker. And I want the button panel to be black. And then let's insert the button. and center it inside the panel. But with a little bit of distance to the right edge. So that's the padding. What we want the button to do now is, when pushing it, it should open the panel with our Google Map inside and if we click it again, it should close the panel. This is just as an alternative to having to integrate a close button in the panel. So for this we have to set the button to toggle, okay? So we only have two states of the button. And now we'll create the new panel. As before we insert a container that's as big as the viewer. 100% and 100%. And now, instead of inserting a second container like we did before, we insert the web frame directly in here. And again, I want this web frame to be as big as the container, but as you can see now, I'm covering the button panel that I just created. So what I have to do now is place the button panel in t on top of the web frame element. To do that, Go to the list of elements, select the player, which will pop up a new list below that'll show all the elements inside of that player. And in there, I simply drag the element up that I want to come forward, okay? So pull up the container that is the button panel, so it'll be on top of the container with the web frame. Okay, there you go, it's come forward. Select the web frame again, and here on the right we now have to insert the embedding URL of our Google Map. So we go to Google Maps, this is the map that I want to include with the location set already. And again, as you can see, the options are quite similar to the scenarios before. So I will go to Share. Up here we have the options Share Link and Embed Map. Obviously we want to embed, so we click it and copy the link. Go back to the program and insert it here. Delete the part before the HTTP. And after the link, starting with the quotation mark. So all of this we don't actually need. For better orientation, let's call this container map. 
And now we still have to assign the action to the button to show or hide the map. So we select the button and go to add action. Select show high component. And since we already set the button to be a toggle button, we now don't have the option up here to select whether you want it to show or hide something, because it'll do both by default, that's what a toggle button does. So it'll show and hide the component depending on the state of the component, so whether it currently is open or closed. At start, make it invisible and check how it looks. See, the first click opens the map, and as you can see, we can use this as if we were actually in Google Maps with all of its options. And clicking again, the map will close. So this behavior is due to the fact that we set this button to be toggled. And that's it. I hope this was useful for you guys and you all start creating multimedia tools by embedding external content now. Thanks for watching.